Very good. Thank you. Uh, so the title is Parity Protected Drugs and Qubits, and uh, you see my collaborators. Uh, but let me start with the really important things, and uh, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here on such a wonderful occasion. Uh, I know Borea for a good uh, third of a century, and uh, I tried to find the earliest photos in my archive, and that was from year 1987. And the site was Dushanbe, which is the capital of Tajikistan. And the occasion was a Brikosov school on condensed matter physics. Uh, I want to emphasize two things. A, Boris is easily identifiable on all photos, which means that <laughs> over the last 30 years, he hasn't changed much. The second thing is that Boris always attracts people. Uh, just because he is a great guy, but also he is a generator of new ideas. And over the years, those interactions and attractions significantly increased his polyronic mass. At the same time, he got delocalized. Uh, so, um, Boria, many happy returns. Now back to, by the way, I like this look, right? Uh, back to superconducting qubits. So I will start with a very brief introduction that emphasizes still the search for new approaches to individual qubits. Um, so theoretically, qubit is just a simple two-state system, for example, spin one-half in some fictitious magnetic field. In reality, if the spin, uh, if the qubit is made of macroscopic uh, solid-state system, it's a complicated spectrum. I, I, I cannot see the, it's, there is a dot. And the lowest two energy states are used in logical iterations. It's zero and one. Uh, the spectrum should be uh, non-harmonic to be able to address this transition and not to excite all the other ones. And this unharmonicity is an important parameter because it uh, sets the scale how quickly you can talk to a qubit because the shortest operational time of the qubit is inversely proportional to the unharmonicity. Now, uh, the qubit is a quantum system with a decoherence rate, and it's important to realize how good the qubit should be for uh, uh, being a part of quantum computation. So the qubit is characterized by this ratio, the so-called error rate, where T naught is the time of the longest iteration, and typically it's two qubit rotations, and T2 is the decoherence time. Now, uh, to implement the error correction codes, it's a common agreement that uh, we need uh, the error rate uh, smaller than 10 to minus four. And if you think that for simplest rotations, uh, for example, for rabbit flop, you need to wait for something like 100 periods of fundamental frequency of the qubit, right? That means that uh, if you consider qubit as a nonlinear oscillator, uh, the Q factor, the quality factor of this oscillator should be greater than a million, which is a very challenging task. Uh, now, uh, what is the current state of art? Uh, this is the plot. The horizontal axis is years. The vertical axis is the qubit lifetime, and the right vertical axis is operations per error. And you see that over the last uh, 15 years from the first seminal experiment in Dr. Tsai's group in Tsukuba, 
to the present day, there was a dramatic increase in qubit lifetime. Uh, this is the so-called Morse law for superconducting qubits. We see that the, the threshold, the threshold I'm, I was talking about, which is the error rate 10 to minus 4 perturbation, is almost realized for single qubit iterations. If we look at two qubit gates, you see that uh, this epsilon is still roughly an order of magnitude uh, uh, greater than what we need. And these are probably the best data uh, at present. Uh, so the state of the field is that from uh, single physical qubits, the field is ready to go to the next stage, which is a logical qubit would, that would live forever by running the error correction code. But we are not there yet. And uh, though Martinez, uh, who is a one of the leaders in the field, described that, that we are somewhere between the invention of the transistor and the invention of the integrated circuit, in my mind, we are not there yet because a transistor in this language is probably a logical qubit and not a physical qubit. However, despite all those difficulties, funding is already in hundreds of million. Uh, we have many hundreds of people involved in this field in industry. Now, but it's clear that though most of the groups are focused on transmon type structures, the most popular qubits, there's a need for improvement of individual qubits. And one of the one of the approaches to this uh, was a design of parity protected Johnson circuits. What this is about? Uh, I'll be talking about two types of circuits, and again, because of time constraints, it will be a very brief discussion. Uh, parity will mean two things. In the first circuit, I'm talking about two Josephson, funny Josephson squids attached to a single small island. And I'll be talking about the number, parity of the numbers of Cooper pairs on this island. Uh, by the way, this funny squid interrupted by four junctions, uh, I'll be referring to as Josephson rhombus. Now, this element is a kind of non-trivial Josephson element, which is cosine 2 phi periodic in the phase across the element. Um, now, the second uh, circuit that I will be talking about is a Cooper pair box, which is shunted by a very large inductance. And in this case, the parity refers to the number of flux quanta fluxons in the superconducting loop, um, which contains those two elements. In the first case, parity is protected by aronov bohm deconstructive in, uh, destructive interference for transfer of single Cooper pairs. Let's take a look. So we have two arms. If they are identical, the amplitude of, of this tunneling is the same for both arms. But if the rhombus is penetrated by the magnetic flux, which is half of, of the flux quantum, the phase between those processes is pi, and deconstructive interference kills this tunneling. And in this case, the uh, parity of the number of Cooper pairs is protected. Note, please, that the transfer of uh, correlated transfer of two Cooper pairs is allowed. For this process, the uh, phase is 2 pi. Now, in the second device, uh, one can introduce the amplitude of flux, uh, fluxon tunneling 
in the loop or out of the loop. And this is the, uh, it's similar to the phase slip, sent, uh, phase slip process in one of the junctions. Because of Aronov Kescher phase, the, uh, phase uh, the phase difference between those two processes depends on the charge on the central island. And when this charge is elementary charge E or one half of the Cooper pair, again, because of destructive interference, tunneling of individual fluxons is um, forbidden, but two fluxons can tunnel at the same time. Uh, more mathematical description of the idea of protected qubits is shown here. We have some uh, oscillator. This parabolic confinement corresponds to the potential term. K is discrete. And uh, in one case, it's the number of Cooper pairs. In the other case, it's the number of fluxons in the loop. Uh, the kinetic term is funny. It contains only the terms that mix, uh, that mix K and K plus minus 2. And there are not terms that mix K with plus minus 1, which signifies uh, parity protection. Now, for such a system, uh, if you look at the lowest energy states in the system, you can construct two Gaussian envelopes. One of them will contain only odd k's and another one only even k's. Now, what's the advantage of dealing with those two wave functions? If the parity is protected, those two functions cannot be converted in one into another, right? which means that in the language of qubits, T1 is infinitely long. There is no energy relaxation. Those two states are almost uh, degenerate in energy. It depends on how many components we have uh, in this envelope. And uh, if the parity is protected, T1 is infinitely long. Now, those states are very difficult to distinguish from the viewpoint of the environment. Uh, and uh, if the number of components is large, that means that T2 is very long as well. And there is also some advantage that for uh, such a qubit, we can think of fault tolerant rotations, but that's outside of this talk. Uh, let me briefly describe the, the experimental results that we have. Uh, uh, Andy, yes. uh, uh, how many minutes I, I have? OK, thank you. So let's start with charge pairing devices. And uh, let me show you how, uh, well, that's basically the same idea. Uh, we have uh, our own bomb phase, uh, which is gained by when you uh, move a charge around the flux, magnetic flux, and parity protected uh, here because if those two arms are symmetric and the rhombus is penetrated by half a flux quantum, then we have transport in the system. The system has a critical current, which is due to the uh, flow of four E charges, correlated pairs of Cooper pairs. But there is no critical charge due to conventional single Cooper pair transport. And that was shown in our experiments in, some time ago. Um, fabrication. Uh, all the qubits I'm talking about will be made of aluminum. Uh, there are new ideas that came from Charlie's lab on novel structures that are controlled by Elect, uh, electrical gates. I just briefly mentioned about that at the end of my talk, but all the results that I'll be talking about are just conventional aluminum uh, junctions. So you see, uh, for example, this is a rhombus. There are four Jolson junctions at intersections of aluminum strips. Uh, this is the device and the readout that uh, I'll be talking about it has a little bit more complicated uh, topology. Uh, I won't uh, 
discuss this. So, but you can uh, identify to Rombi with now a little bit more junctions. That's the central island which charge uh, I'll be talking about. And uh, this qubit is coupled uh, to the uh, lumped element microwave resonator. And the state of the qubit will be detected by the shift of the resonance line of the LC resonator. So the microwave impedance of the qubit in states 0 and 1 are, uh, is different. And uh, this uh, impedance being recalculated into the uh, readout resonator shifts the line of the resonator. In the experiment, we have two knobs. We can either change the phase difference across the qubit by changing the flux in this loop. Now, this loop is very large. So without uh, deviating from the condition that flux in one of those, or each rhombus is, should be half a flux quantum, this loop is uh, about 100 times bigger. So uh, we can change the flux, uh, the phase across the qubit by many pi's without violating this condition. And the second knob is the charge on this island, which is controlled by the uh, uh, gate capacitor. Uh, this is the micro, uh, microwave circuit that I will probably skip. Uh, spectroscopy uh, shows that the spectrum of this system is very close to what one can predict uh, for reasonable parameters. For example, for charge on the central island, which is zero in those units, uh, this is a spectrum which is shown in red as a function of the global magnetic field. Uh, if uh, the charge is one half, ideally, uh, the spectrum should give us straight line at zero. But there is a small asymmetry between upper and lower arms. And from this spectrum, we can estimate all parameters that uh, we can use for uh, simulation of the properties of the qubit. So the Johnson energy, uh, which uh, controls the transport of pairs of Cooper pairs, is 10 times greater than the residual uh, E1 that controls uh, uh, the uh, transport of single Cooper pairs. Ideally, that should be zero, but uh, uh, we're dealing with a nanoscale Johnson uh, individual junctions. And typically, the uh, reproducibility of those junctions is something like 5 10%. So that's, that's the reason why uh, it cannot be easily done much better. Uh, so the main result is that if you are far from the optimal point, uh, the system has T1, which is about one microsecond. And that's typical for uh, not so good uh, qubits. Now, if we approach the sweet spot, uh, which means that the flux in each qubit is phi naught over two, right? And the charge is correct on the same island T1 increases by two orders of magnitude, and it's close to 100 microsecond. Right. Uh, at the same time, T2 is not that great, because if you count how many individual K components we have in the envelope, instead of many, many, we have four. As a result, T2, uh, which can be further optimized later on, is only a couple of microseconds. Right, so this is the promising design, which can be improved. We know how to improve it. Uh, but let me switch gears and uh, discuss this fluxon pairing device, which is also a very interesting approach. So um, now we have a Cooper pair box, uh, shunted by a very large inductor. Because of our own Cash effect, we want to suppress tunneling of individual fluxons in the loop. 
and leave only a significant rate of tunneling of correlated flux ones. What are the conditions? And the conditions are challenging to uh, optimize this thing. So if you look at the Hamiltonian of the structure, the last term, which in this case is a parabolic confinement term, has E sub L, which is inversely proportional to the inductance of this so-called superinductor. So uh, what we want to realize that because of tunneling of pairs of uh, fluxons, you see that those minima are localized at 0, 4 pi, 8 pi, and so on and so forth. Because of the tunneling between those uh, minima, uh, the states uh, have a finite width. And the displacement of those states, because of this parabolic confinement, should be much less than the width of the level. This is the condition. In this case, the state is delocalized or many minima, and we have many components in this uh, Gaussian envelope. And that's the condition to realize long T2. Now, if you look at the numbers, you need a superinductance of the order of 10 microhenry. It turns out that in two dimensions, uh, if you do not use some tricks and use just wires, the inductance is basically limited, or impedance, let's put it this way. The impedance is limited to the impedance of this free space, which is 377 ohm. So we cannot rely on geometrical inductance. We have to use kinetic inductance of superconductors, or Josephson inductance. And it's a challenge to realize such a large inductance without uh, reducing the impedance of the circuit because of parasitic capacitance associated with the topology of the circuit. And the second requirement is that in order to have a large width of the levels, we need a high rate of double phase slips, um, which uh, implies that the ratio of the Johnson energy to the charging energy of uh, those junctions in the Cooper pair box should be much less than unity. Uh, the design of the superinductor in our experiment uh, follows the, our earlier work. Uh, it's a chain of asymmetric squids frustrated by the field. So basically, there are two approaches. Either this approach based on one-dimensional chain of squids or just a serious connection of many, many Johnson junctions. And that's the approach that uh, Yale people used for their so-called fluxonium. Uh, the advantage of our approach is that this inductance is tunable, and it, its nonlinearity is tunable as well. Uh, and uh, currently, this approach uh, gives the induct inductance, which is about an order of magnitude greater than the inductance of a chain of linear chain of Johnson junctions. So the, uh, the design of the device is shown here. We have a Cooper pair box. These are two small junctions. Uh, it's flanked by superinductor. There are two halves of the superinductor. Each is three segments of six unit cells each. And this is a coupler that couples the system to readout resonator. And the readout resonator is coupled to the microwave feed line. Uh, so what one should expect in this circuit? If we forget about any flux on tunneling, the system is very simple. It's represented by a fixed number of fluxons in the loop. And then each uh, level is just a parabolic curve that corresponds to a fixed M. M stands for the uh, number of fluxons in the loop. Now, if we allow some single fluxon tunneling processes, we open the gap here 
which means that, uh, yeah, and if, step back, if we forget about flux on tunneling, the difference between those two levels, so this is zero and this is one, the difference between two parabolas shifted horizontally is just a linear function. And you expect a zigzag line uh, with the uh, zero intercept, which signifies that there is no uh, avoided crossing between those two parabolic uh, shapes. Now, uh, ideally, we want to realize the situation that we have zero avoided crossing here and significant uh, gap that corresponds to correlated tunneling of two flux zones in the loop. This has not been realized yet, but uh, probably for the first time we clearly observed a run of Cashew effect in superconducting circuits. And by clear observation, I mean that it's a spectroscopic evidence where all the charges are controlled. And you see that uh, if I uh, look at blue dots that represent zero to one uh, transition in the spectra of the qubit, uh, for technical reasons we cannot approach zero, but you see that extrapolation gives us a very uh, nice evidence that uh, because of destructive uh, um, of cashier interference, we have almost 100% suppression of the uh, tunneling of single Q preparers, uh, I'm sorry, flux zones. And uh, there is a kind of uh, reasonable gap, but not optimized gap due to the correlated tunneling of pairs of um, flux zones. All right, uh, the last slide refers to the new, yes, uh, Andy, I'm done. Uh, to the new approach that uh, uh, we hope that soon there will be a new platform uh, which has four parity protected qubits that, have, uh, that has several advantages uh, in comparison with the conventional Johnson junction. In Marcus' lab in the University of Copenhagen, um, uh, the uh, high quality structures that contain nanowires uh, and uh, semiconductor nanowires, which uh, can be epitaxially covered with aluminum, are developed. And this is a tunable, ele electrically tunable Johnson junction. So in this case, you can easy to symmetrize the circuit, right? with a high precision, uh, which uh, is important for all those circuits protected by the symmetry between the junctions. And uh, the second advantage for fault tolerant operations, uh, this circuit can be uh, controlled by fast electric pulses, which is also a great advantage. Uh, okay, let me uh, wrap it up. So there are several approaches to so-called parity protected qubits. If they are made correctly, um, there is a hope that T1 and T2 can be further improved. Uh, there are several steps towards realization of those circuits. It's a long way to go. There are several important challenges but there is an optimism. Thank you for your attention.